It's hard to deny the importance of the destiny question. We don't live forever. Everybody dies, and yet, strangely enough, it's something that all of us must do alone. We won't know exactly what any of that's like until we get there. It's not something most of us choose to think about, but it's something we all have to face. Like most difficult questions, this one has been answered in many different ways. Many people simply believe that when you die, you die, and that's it. We've heard about everything from reincarnation to the belief that life is nothing and then returns to nothing. Now, I don't know about you, but if the people who say we came from nothing are right, if we really did come to be because of timing, matter, and a lot of luck, then I, for one, would be living my life in a very different way. Instead, my life is very different because I believe there's more to it. I believe that the kingdom of heaven is also on earth, that God is radically near to us in both life and in death, and that heaven matters on earth, and that we on earth matter in heaven. What do you believe? Back with my dad one more time and dad now our topic is destiny what is destiny so often people think of it as we're just kind of all going to heaven as long as we're good is that an accurate definition sometimes it is um, said sort of casually as it's my destiny you know that's what, what they mean is it was the way it was meant to be sometimes they'll use it fatalistically um, or the Muslim will say, inshallah, you know, it's the will of God. Ke uh, sara, sara, whatever will be, will be. They sometimes disconnect it from a purpose which involves a person, that there is the will of God, that there's a person of God. So I don't think one could just say that it is to get to heaven. There is a purpose in this life. There is a purpose beyond this life. There are destinations to which you will come in this life. I like what Soren Kierkegaard, the Danish philosopher, said on the basis of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. He said, I have learned to define life backwards and live it forwards. What he means is starting from the ultimate destiny of being with God, I start then moving towards it and all other destinations are defined on the basis of that ultimate destination. So can we make our own destiny? I know that's a, a popular thought in entertainment. I, I think of one of my own favorite movie franchises where the premise is you make your own future. Is that true or are we at the mercy of it being made for us? You know, one of the things I've concluded after years of working in this arena is that the most dangerous thing in this life are dangerous half-truths. If they mean that your choices are vital in determining many things in the future, and if they mean by that that you have a key responsibility in how you shape your choices, yes, of course that's true. You have to face the responsibility, you have to make decisions. But if they mean by that that the ultimate destination in life, even beyond the grave, and uh, or even in uh, the discussion of uh, the absence of any transcending uh, worldview that has to superintend this, then no, it's not correct. Uh, the Bible basically tells me as far as the end of life is concerned, I have two choices, either to be in the presence of God who has made us for himself or to choose my own destination apart from God. On the other hand, there are many, many times in life where I have made some choices and God in his mercy has intervened and brought somebody into my life to take me away from those damaging choices that I made. Sometimes it's a friend, sometimes it's a, a person whom you listen to on the radio or uh, reading a book or whatever. There are boundaries and parameters that are pre-established as to the range of options. That is important to know. The Bible says, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. If God is God, serve him. You know, and oh, if you want to serve the alternative, which in that time was Baal worship, you go that route. At the same time, I believe your choices are very important to operate within the framework that God has provided. I, in my, the book, The Grand Weaver, I put it this way. God holds the threads. And when you respond to his nod, you will find in the end the design has been beautiful. If you do not respond to his directions, then you find that you have ruined a great design that could have been. The best way to look at this is the fact that there's the sovereignty of God at work and your will at work. And when you go by his word and live by his word, 
you will find wisdom for the choices and the destination is what God has prepared for you to be eternally with him. Now, there's one thing that I should add as a footnote here, the issue of hope. This is something we often talk about, again, casually. I hope it works out. I hope this, I hope that. That's not what the Bible means by hope. The Bible means that, the Bible means that there is a confidence you can have that God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you if you live by his word and God has a destiny for you to be ultimately with him. So I don't just hope it works out. Knowing Christ, following Christ, I know it will work out. Sometimes we grieve, but not as those without hope. Sometimes we sorrow, but not as those who have no ultimate hope. We have the hope and go through life with the challenges, knowing he who has made us for himself is waiting to welcome us to our ultimate destination, which is heaven itself. So how does that affect our daily living? How do we use that when we're making choices? I think what the Bible says is so true, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. There's a sense in which uh, Jesus in the temptation in the wilderness has given all these options to find shortcuts, to do the miracle, to jump and see if God would, his father would indeed protect him or to bow down and worship uh, Satan and all these uh, powers and uh, potentialities and all of that of the world would be given to him. And Jesus said, no, it is also written, it is also written, the key that I believe what God has for us is revealed to us in his word. If we live by that word in making our choices and our uh, decisions, then you will find that the destination for which he has created you is punctuated with joys. And when disappointments come, you nevertheless triumph over them. Throughout the series, our goal is to, well, first of all, teach how to you know, defend truth and the Christian faith. And as part of that, we've compared it to other religions. So I'm again going to ask the question, what do other religions say? Do they all believe in heaven? Do they all believe in hell? Or what about the uh, atheist who would believe in neither? No, they don't all believe in heaven and hell. And these days, interestingly enough, there's a lot of conversation about those things. In Hinduism, every birth is a rebirth. In each life, you repay for the previous life. And depending upon which strand of Hinduism you go to, you ultimately get absorbed into the infinite personal absolute. There is a personal theistic side to Hinduism in the Gita and so on. And, but ultimately, good and evil get dissolved in the process. Life becomes a leela or a play. They, they talk in terms of a consummate ending to life of devotion. That's the way they would talk about it. But it is not given in the terms that the Christian worldview would. In uh, Islam, yeah, they will tell you your good deeds will be weighed by your bad deeds, and then they take you the good deeds. If they outweigh the bad deeds, they get you into paradise. And the very notion of paradise is very different to what it is in the Judeo-Christian worldview. In the atheists, of course, as Bertrand Russell said, you uh, ultimately die with a faith in unyielding despair. There is a, an annihilation. There's nothing beyond the grave. That's it. That's the final moment for you. It's over with. In the Christian worldview, we are created for communion with God. Relationship is key in this life relationship is ultimate in the life to come. And there is not only that relationship with God in heaven, but also with the loved ones that you knew on earth, those who have walked towards that goal in him provided for them. But the Bible says those who reject that, their will will be honored. I know we don't like to think about that, but so I look at heaven this way. Heaven is communion with God in the presence of God. Hell is your personal choice of separation from God, and that will ultimately be given to you. That is precisely what you want. I like what Dostoyevsky said. Hell to him would seem like the inability to love. Think about that, the inability to love. And those who have rejected the love of God choose for themselves a destiny of the inability to love. Those who trust God find that 
consummate relationship in heaven with him. C.S. Lewis says there are two kinds of people in this world. Those who bend their knee to God and say to him, thy will be done. And those who refuse to bend their knee to God and God says to them, all right, your will be done. Heaven or hell is the ultimate destination, which is the confirmation of your will. Well, thanks again, Dan.